Let's go to the book of Joshua. He is worthy. He's a good God. He's an awesome God. Aren't you glad that you know him today? Joshua chapter 24. Pray for my voice this morning. Joshua 24 and verse 15. Joshua was speaking to the children of Israel. And he says to them, If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. But as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. Would you pray with me this morning, dear Heavenly Father? Lord, we're thankful this morning again for the privilege and the opportunity to be in your house once again. Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit would move freely in this place today. Not leave any stones unturned. Not leave any hearts untouched. Lord, I pray that our ears would be open and our hearts receptive, Lord, to what the Spirit would say to the church today. And Lord, help us today that we leave here not the same way we came in, but different, changed under the power and the presence and the anointing of Your Word and the Holy Spirit today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Joshua said, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. Whether people realize it or not, we're going to serve somebody. We're either going to serve the Lord or we're going to serve the devil or we'll serve ourselves. Amen. And Joshua says, Serve the Lord and choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served. They were on the other side of the flood, the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Around the world on any given Sunday, people will meet in churches to hear a preacher preach or a Bible teacher teach and tell them about the love of God and what God has the power and the desire to do for us. But many of them will not tell the people what their responsibility is. You see, perhaps the greatest thing that God has ever given to us is the privilege and the power to choose. See, we're serving, we're serving a God today that has given us the freedom and the liberty to make our own choices. We're not, we're not serving a God who, who makes us serve Him. We're not living for a God who makes us live for Him. Amen? He's given us the power to choose whom we will serve. Amen. Amen. Joshua's words, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. Amen. What does it tell us? That tells us that we are responsible to choose <coughs> right or wrong. Yeah. It's up to us. We make the choices in this life. Those words tell us you are in charge of your destiny and not God. Because God has already done all He's going to do concerning your destiny when He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus.
Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Amen. God's done everything. He provided everything we need. Amen. He, he's given us a way to choose. Amen. Can you say amen? God has designed it. He's made provision for it. But you must discover it. God is the master planner. But you must build it. Can you say amen? amen? You see, the title of the message this morning is Your Destiny is Your Choice. Your Destiny is your choice. You get to choose. It's up to you whether you make it to heaven or not. Amen. You choose whether you serve the Lord or not. It's up to you. All of, all of these choices God gives to us, He gives us the responsibility to make our own choices. Amen. God's designed our destiny. He made provision for our destiny. But it's up to you and me to discover what our destiny is. It's up to you and me to make the choice whether or not we want to go to heaven or not. Come on, somebody. Amen. God is the master planner. But you got to build. Can you say amen? amen? Just as Noah built the ark over a period of time, you and I are building our future. We're building our future. Now I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the future in this world. I'm talking about our eternal future. Amen. Where we're going to spend eternity. Because that's the most important thing yes. that we get right down here, right now. Is where we're going to spend eternity. The most important thing that you and I can do is to make the right choice to follow the Lord. Can you say amen? And just as Noah built the ark over a period of time, you and I are building our future and we're doing it one day at a time. We're doing it one choice at a time. And we're doing it one act of obedience at a time. Your future and your destiny is not a mystery. It's a harvest. Let me explain. There's a very powerful verse in Hosea chapter 8 and verse 7. <coughs> Simply said this, for they have sown the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. I want you to notice something this morning. That they reap exactly what they sow. They sow the wind, they reap the tornado. Hello? Amen. You always get back what you sow. But you never get back the same amount that you sow. It is always multiplied back to you. They sowed the wind, but they reaped the whirlwind. They sowed the wind, but they reaped a tornado, so to speak. It's kind of like the law of sowing and reaping. You can take a kernel of corn and put it in the ground. If you're not going to get back a kernel of corn, what will happen is it will die, it will germinate, it will grow a stalk up, and on that stalk will be several ears of corn. Six, seven, eight, I don't know how many is going to be on there. But each one of those ears will have hundreds of kernels of corn. You plant one kernel, but you get back way more than what you plant. And that's what the Bible is teaching us here. They sow the wind, but they reap the whirlwind. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If we sow it, we'll reap it. Amen. And, and that applies in the natural. It applies uh, 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 in the spiritual. Amen. It applies in every area of our life. You say, what are you talking about, Pat? Well, if you want to be, if you want people to like you, then you're going to have to be like them. Amen. Amen. If you want people to like you, you're going to have to sow kindness. Amen. 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 If you sow hate, you know what you're going to get back. Hey, if you sow discord, you know what you're going to get back. 
Discord. If you sow division, you know what you're going to get back? Division. Okay? If, if you sow love, you know what you're going to get back? Love. But remember, you never get back the amount that you sow. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's always multiplied back. So the Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth. That shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, we make choices every day concerning the flesh and concerning the Spirit man. Amen. We we can we sow things to the flesh and we sow things to the spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, depending on what you reap depends on what you sow. Amen. So if you sow to your flesh, you will <laughs> reap corruption and destruction. But if you sow to the spirit man, you shall reap life everlasting. See, a lot of people live for themselves. They say, oh, preacher, I'm, I'm not serving God, but I ain't serving the devil either. Well, you're serving, serving one or the other. Amen. Amen. You're either serving God or you're serving the devil or you're serving yourself. Not much difference. Amen. Because it's going to make a difference on whom you serve down here. Amen. Can you say amen? So, if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption, but if you sow to the Spirit, you shall reap everlasting life. We can follow the flesh, we can follow the desire of the flesh, or we can follow the spirit man that lives on the inside of it, if we're born again. Amen. If you're not born again, you're going to follow that human spirit that's on the inside of you. And you're not going to make good choices. Can you say amen? amen. You cannot blame anyone for the life that you have, whether good or bad. Because you created it by your choices and through what you have sown. A lot of people don't like to hear this. You know why? A lot of people want to blame somebody else. Amen. You cannot blame anyone for the life that you have right now except yourself. Amen. 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 Right now, you are reaping from seeds you have sown in the past. If you don't like what you're reaping, then sow some different kinds of seed. If you don't like what you're reaping, then change what you're sowing. Hello? Amen. You, did anybody get that? Amen. If you don't like what you're reaping, then change what you're sowing. Amen? Amen. Because if you want to sow, if you want to reap something better on down the road, then you've got to start sowing something better today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And listen, church, I know I know this morning that, that many things can happen in life that are out of our control. There's some things that we just can't control. There's some things that we have no control over. And they can affect you for better or worse, but no one can choose the direction of your life or your destiny with you. You have that power to choose this one. You cannot always control what happened to you and you cannot control when or where you were born or what side of the tracks you were born on, but you need to stop blaming everyone else for your problems and the circumstances in your life because you are where you are today because of the result of choices you made in the past. I'm here. I am here right now today because of the choices I made in my past. Amen. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I was on the wrong road. I lived 28 years of my life going down the wrong road, taking the wrong path, making the wrong choices. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it led me down a path of destruction. And I was I was facing death when I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior in my life. I'm sitting on the side of the road in the backslidden 
different situation because I got saved in my early 20s when I was 20 years old. Lived for the Lord for about a year and a half and turned and walked away. And I want to tell you something. I've been five years. That was the worst five years of my life when I was away from God. You want to know why? Because He wouldn't leave me alone. He kept dealing with me and kept dealing with me and I had problem after problem and trouble after trouble and problem after problem and trouble after trouble. Come on somebody. Amen. And you say, preacher, what was you running from? Well, I knew the call of God was on my life and I didn't want to tell nobody and I didn't want to answer. So you know what I'm doing? I run. Let me tell you something. You can't run fast enough. You can't run far enough to get away from God. Let's just, let's just get that out there this morning. Amen. Amen. But I thank God today for God who loves me. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? And for God who has forgiven me of all of my past wrongdoings and all of my offenses and all of my sins. And He called me into the ministry. And that morning sitting out there on the road by myself thinking I'm dying. Thought I was having a heart attack. I was actually having a stroke. Preacher, what would you have in the trunk? I overdosed. Sitting on the side of the road by myself. You know what I did? I repented. Right then and right there. You know what I knew? If I died, I was going to hell. Couldn't nobody convince me otherwise because I knew the truth. Amen. And been told all my life. I sit, I sit under the preacher that told me I once saved, always saved. But at that moment I was sitting there and I was, I was dealing with my eternal destiny. Yeah. And I knew that the state that I was in, had I died, I was not going to heaven. And I repented and I gave my life over to the Lord right then and right there. Thank you, Lord. You know what happened? Somebody came by, two young boys. Never seen them before, never seen them again. I don't know if they were the angels that God sent. Have no idea. They, asked, they stopped, they asked me, was I all right? I said, no, I need to go to the hospital. One of them got out, got in my truck, drove me to the hospital, never seen them again. To this day, I don't know who they were. Never seen them before, never seen them again. So while I was sitting on the side of the road, you know what I done? I got right with God. And I'll even tell you what I said. I said, Lord, I'm sorry that I walked away. But if you'll give me another chance, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say. Just give me another chance. Lord, I want to see my children grow up. I want to see my grandchildren grow up. And I want to see my grandchildren grow up. See, I'm going to grow. I wasn't going to stop. Because God was going to answer me. I want him to answer good. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. How do <laughs> My wife, they call her. I, I, this, none of this is in my notes. I didn't want to go here this morning. They call my wife. And they said, Miss Neal, your 28 year old husband's down here in the hospital when he's having a stroke. We don't want him. I'm going to hurry up and get down here. And she didn't. I'm going to tell you, I went through, through some of the worst experiences of freedom. Because I, don't, I woke up one time in the emergency room, and I don't recall anything else but waking up one more time after they had gotten me into a room in CCU. I woke up for a few minutes one time in there. And I don't remember anything else. But they said they they worked on me all night long to keep me alive. The next morning I woke up, everything was fine, nothing was wrong. It's just like nothing had happened. My wife was standing there by my side, and I looked up at her, and I told her, I said, baby, I got right with God before I went out. And I don't know where we're going. But when we get home some morning, we go going to church somewhere. We're going to get back and we're going to start serving the Lord. You know what? 
We've been serving the Lord ever since. I'm not stopped. I'm not turned back. Because I realize that every one of us here this morning has a destiny. And God has done everything in His power to make provision for us that we can choose our own destiny. Where we're going to spend eternity with this life and over here. Because to leave this the church, that's the most important decision that you and I will ever make. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody give the Lord praise. You see, you can't always control what happens to you. And you cannot control when or where you were born or what side of the track you were born on. But you got to stop blaming everyone else for your problems because we make the choice. Amen. We make the choice. Can you say amen? amen? You see, you are the governor of what happens in you and through you. Let me say that again. You are the governor of what happens in you and through you. And you do have the power to choose how you will live and who you will serve. Amen. That leaves us in the same place Joshua was in. In the place of decision. God designs our destiny, but you have to discover it in your decisions. Decide it. <clears throat> so I came to tell you this morning, choose wisely. God is the master planner, but you are the builder. God has given us the foundation and the cornerstone that we must build our house upon. Amen. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20, the Bible says, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. You see, the foundation of the apostles and the prophets is the word of God. Amen. It's the word that God gave to His prophets and the word that He gave to His apostles. That's why we have this today. Amen. It is the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. The cornerstone is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, Jesus said this. He said, Whoever hears my word and does them is like it to a wise man who built his house on a rock. Jesus said, If you hear my word and you keep my word, <coughs> then I will liken, I will liken you unto a, unto a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Amen. On a solid foundation. What is the foundation that God has given to us to build on? The Word of God. And the cornerstone? Jesus Christ. Amen. If any man hears my words, I liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain will descend. The floods will come. The wind will blow. But that house will stand. Why? Because it's built on the rock. It's built on the solid rock. It's built on the Word of God. It's built on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the King of life. He's the salvation of mankind. He is the Son of God. And that's what God has given to us. To build our house on. Can you say amen? amen? So I say to you this morning, build your house upon the rock. Because Jesus then turned around and said, but he who does not hear my word and does not keep my saying, I will like to give unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended. The floods came. The winds blew. That house fell down. The destruction of that house is great. 
Can I tell you why Jesus makes the statement that the destruction of that house is great? Because you and let me as a father building my foundation or building my house on God's foundation. I'm being an example and I'm setting the precedence for my children and my grandchildren and my grandchildren's children and so on and so on and so on. Many of you are here today because your parents served God. Your grandparents served God. Some of us are here today because maybe only our grandparents served God. Some of us are here today and maybe nobody in our family served God. But that's the good thing about God. He's merciful and He's a gracious God and He's full of forgiveness. And we can start today just because our family didn't get it right. Don't mean we can't get it right. Because in Jesus Christ, we can get it right today. And we can build our house on the right God doesn't hold us accountable for what our parents done or did not do. We are all held accountable for what we do ourselves. We must choose to accept what God has given us to build on if we want to serve Him and become the children of God and inherit the kingdom of heaven. You see, the lives of many today are in shambles because they rejected the cornerstone. Joshua exhorted the people to choose. <coughs> then he was quick to say, I've made my decision. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's, a, there's an old song, an old little chorus that I used to sing a long time ago. And the name of it is, I've made my decision. Anybody ever heard it?
future of your children and your grandchildren. Are you a believer? Have you been born again? Have you made the decision to follow Christ? Call accepting Jesus in your life is the most important decision that you will ever make. In John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Regardless of what some people say, the truth is, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Amen. The Bible teaches us that there are only two destinations. Heaven and hell. We have a little bit of description from the Bible about each place. When you, when you know what the Bible says about heaven and you know what the Bible says about hell, how can we not make the decision that we want to go to heaven? We talk about heaven. We, we, you can go to, to Revelation uh, uh, 20, 20, 21 and, and it is described heaven and it describes the new heaven and the new earth. Not the, not the one that's there now, but it describes the new one that, that we're going to receive. Come on, somebody. Amen. And when you, when you look at the description of heaven, and, and, you, and you know that the Bible says that, that God's going to take, take us and he, He's going to wipe all of our tears away. There's not going to be any more pain. There's not going to be any more sorrow. There's not going to be any more sickness. There's not going to be any of the things that are killing and destroying us today. Because God's going to do away with it. It's a beautiful place. You, 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 you read about the descriptions of it and you can't even comprehend in your mind <coughs> what it's really going to look like. And then God, God, He, he gave us a, a verse of Scripture in one place and He said, Eyes haven't seen nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. Amen. We've not seen it. We've not heard it. We can't, we can't imagine it. The best that we can come up with uh, is not going to... It, it won't do it justice because God says the best we can come up with Ain't going to touch Amen. what I prepared for you. Then we know a lot about what the Bible says about hell. And Jesus had a lot to say about hell. He said there would be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It would be a place of torment. It would be hot. Amen. It'd be a place where the worm dies not. I, I don't fully understand that, but I don't think I want to. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And he tells the he tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus, and from that story we find out that a man will be conscious. He'll have his memory. You'll remember everything that you've ever done in this life. You'll remember every time that an invitation was ever given where you sat in the house of God and the invitation was given to come to Christ and you sit there and you wouldn't move. You rejected the cornerstone. Yes. And you'll remember every one of those opportunities that you had to accept Christ and to miss that place. It was so terrible that the rich man said to Lazarus, would, would, could you just cross over, dip your water, dip your finger in water and cross over here and touch my, touch your finger to my tongue, to my lips. Because these flames are tormenting me. Hell is a real place. And as awful as hell is, let me tell you what's worse than hell, what's going to be worse than hell itself. You want to know? You want to know what's going to be worse than hell itself? 
let me tell you this morning, when you are in hell yourself and your children's heads start popping up around you and they start saying things like, Daddy, why didn't you tell us about this place? Daddy, why didn't you lead us down the path that goes to heaven and not hell? Daddy, why didn't you live your life to be an example of Daddy, why didn't you tell us the truth? When you look over there and you see that your circle has not been broken. Amen. And, and, and mom and daddy there, and grandma and grandpa's there, and my children there, and my grandchildren there, and my grandchildren's children after them, and after them, and after them, and after them, and after them. And after them. Hallelujah. Because I chose to go down the right path.
Right choice. 